Hey, Next Attendees, I'm Justin Wilcox. I'm the founder of Nimbus Health, a software company where we help hospitals automate medical record processing. Now, that's what I do for work, but what I do for fun is actually Customer Dev Labs. It's a blog where I and other founders take our customer development experiences and we write them up and share them so that other people don't fall into the same traps that we did getting started. So, if you like what we talk about today, definitely go check out the blog. Speaking of which, what we're talking about today is four customer discovery hacks. These are the four things that I found hardest to get started with customer development. All right, the first thing we're going to do is talk about who to interview. Now, if you're like me, you think that your cool idea can solve just about everybody's problem in the world. But we know that that's actually not the case because if we try and solve too many people's problems, we end up building a crappy product for a lot of people as opposed to an incredible product for one group of people. And that's what we want to do. But how do we figure out which group of people to build our product for? So I've been experimenting with an app recently, uh, an app to help people be on time to their appointments. And I listed out all of the customer segments who could benefit from this app. You know, folks like real estate agents and college freshmen, techies with ADD, you know, folks with ADD that don't, can't conceptualize time very well, you know, mommy bloggers. So I had a whole list of customer segments, but then I got like a little overwhelmed. Like, which of these customer segments should I focus on? Which one should I go out to interview? So I came up with something that I like to call the spa treatment. So let's see how that works. So what I'm going to do is write S, P, and A. And then for each of my customer segments, I'm going to score them as we take them to the spa. Now the goal here is simply to prioritize our customer segment list so we can figure out which ones we should start interviewing. So the S here stands for size. So when we start talking about size, what I'm going to do is I'm going to score each one of these customer segments uh, from one to three. I'm going to give it a one if, there, if I would measure this customer segment in terms of hundreds or thousands of customers. If it's tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of customers, I'm going to give it a two. And if it's a million customers or more, I give them, give it a three. So let's see how this works. Real estate agents, I'm going to say, I don't know, there's maybe like 100,000 real estate agents out there. So I'm going to give it a two. Now notice that this is not scientific at all. In fact, I know that I'm just pulling this number out of thin air. Um, but I'm doing that because uh, we're just going to try and prioritize this list so we can get out of the building. We don't care if it's scientific. We'll go validate all this stuff later. All right, so college freshmen, how many of those do we think there are? Uh, I don't know, maybe millions? Uh, techies with ADD, uh, 20,000, 30,000. Let's put it at two here. So I would go through normally the rest of all the customer segments, but you get what I'm doing. Let's talk about P. P is for the likelihood that they'll pay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to consider whether someone has money and whether they have the actual pain that we're trying to solve as to a combination will tell us how likely they are to pay. So if someone has a little money or a little pain, we're going to give them a one. If they've got a lot of money and a lot of pain, we're going to give them a three. Somewhere in the middle, we'll give them a two. So let's see how this looks. So real estate agents. Now these guys, it's important for them to be on time for their work. So we think they might have the pain. And they also have a little bit of money because they have a job. But of course, real estate agents are somehow able to be on time now. So maybe it's not the biggest pain in the world. I don't know. I'm just going to give it a two. Uh, for college freshmen, now these guys, when I was a freshman, I knew, I know I had this pain a lot. I was always late to class. But of course, I also didn't have any money. So I definitely fell in the one category. And I imagine a lot of other freshmen do too. All right, techies with ADD. Now again, people with ADD, I know that they have this problem. Uh, so it's a big pain. But techies, and now techies, do they have money? I'm considering a techie as someone with like the iPhone, the latest iPhone, or maybe N minus one in iPhone. So I'm going to actually consider that they do have money and pain. I'm going to give them a three. All right, now it's time to move on to A. A is for access. By access, I mean how easy is it for me to access these customers to market my solution to them and to get them to pay me for it. And I measure that in the amount of time it takes to get their money. So if it would take me weeks to advertise my product and get their money, I give them a one. If it would take days, let's say I've got some email list, I've built up over time, I just need to email people and then send them to some website and then 
give them, get them to give me their credit card information. It would just take a couple days to get their money. I, may, I give them a two. And if it's ours, you know, get a couple press write-ups, launch on some forum, and then all of a sudden we start making money, I give them a three. So in this case, real estate agents, these guys, I don't know any of them. I don't know any of their brokerages, so it's definitely not like a three. But I imagine some number of them read a consistent number of blogs or on forums. So I don't know. I'm going to give these guys a two on access. When it comes down to college freshmen, these guys are a different story. Like, you know, I might be able to get on some forums that cater to college students, but then it's all college students, not just freshmen. So if I just wanted freshmen, then I'd have to, like, go to each individual school and talk to, like, counselors and housing. That sounds like a nightmare, and it definitely it would take me weeks, probably. Now, techies with ADD, that's an entirely different ball of wax because these guys, I know which... Uh, articles and blogs they read, you know, and I've got some connections at Lifehacker um, and some other media outlets, you know, plus some Hacker News hacking, and, you know, I could probably make some money on an app that was already in the App Store within a number of hours, so I'm going to give these guys a three. Now all that's left is to multiply each of these numbers together and see which customer segment comes out on top. So for real estate agents, we've got a score of eight. For college freshmen, we've got three. And for techies with ADD, we've got 18. So you can see here that from the list that I have right now, techies with ADD are the largest customer segment that I can access quickly who will also pay me for my solution. So that's where I'm going to start. Now, of course, if it turns out that any of these assumptions are wrong, and basically they're guaranteed to be wrong, it's OK, because that's what we're going to go do now. We're going to get out of the building. We're going to interview these folks, figure out what we got wrong. And if it turns out that we're totally wrong about their ability to pay or interest in paying us, that's fine. We'll move on to our next customer segment. So that's how I take my long list of customer segments, prioritize them so that I can get out of the building. And now it's your turn. So go ahead and write down three to five customer segments, give them the spa treatment, and figure out which ones you should be interviewing. So all this information is documented up on customerdevlabs.com. Go check it out. I'm Justin Wilcox. Let me know what you learned.